Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. My name is Matt and thank you for stopping by the channel. And if this is your first time here and you want to learn some cool fly tying tips and tricks, maybe some new patterns or some of the old forgotten flies in their history, then subscribe. Click the bell so you don't miss a thing. Now I've got a pretty fun pattern for you today. This is another one from Dave Hughes, American Fly Tying Manual. Now I haven't talked too much about this book. I've used it a lot in many of my videos, but let me just spend a, a few seconds talking about this thing. This was originally printed in 1986. The last printing was 2000. It's out of print now, but it's still widely available. You can find it on Amazon for five to ten dollars. And I'm going to really recommend this one. If, if you're looking for a cool fly tying book, if you're a beginner, it's got lots of a primer on hooks and thread. Some of the basics here on, you know, winged wet flies and the different types of dry flies. But what I really like the most about this book is there are 290 flies in here. 290 patterns, some of them very well known, some of them you will have never heard of. But they're all really cool looking. Now, they don't tell you how to tie each one. It gives you a picture and the recipe. But I have found myself going back to this book time and time again this year. So um, I'd consider checking it out. It's well worth it. So, okay, back to today's pattern, an olive sedge. Now, what's the history on this thing? Well, <laughs> there's not really a history on it. It's like saying, what's the history of a caddis fly? Uh, there's hundreds of them out there, probably thousands. Lots of different people have invented all kinds of patterns that are something similar to this. Um, but, well, what is a sedge, I guess, is a good question. A lot of you folks might not know this, and I didn't know it until fairly recently. A uh, sedge is a caddis. It's an insect of the order Trichoptera that over in the UK, they call almost all of what we call caddis flies, they call them sedge flies. Now, a lot of people here in the States do too, and plenty of people know that a sedge fly is just a caddis fly. I mean, Wikipedia knows that. So yeah, uh, anytime you see a sedge, just think caddis, they're one and the same. So this one, it's just a, it's an olive sedge, which is basically a caddis emerger nymph. It's lightly weighted, so you know, it, it doesn't get too deep too quick. Almost an emerger, almost a caddis pupa, but it's really a pretty cool looking fly. It's very easy to tie. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. There you go, the olive sedge. I'm gonna be tying this on a size 14. This is a competition nymph hook. You see that big curve on it right there? If you don't have a curved hook, just use your regular hook. I think the curved hooks look a little bit better with these nymph type caddis patterns. So I'm gonna put some weight, this is 015, a good eight or nine wraps, just to cover the first half of the body. Now my thread, it's brown. Now I'm using 70 denier UTC. I'll put a dam behind the weight, take it up over, put another dam in front, and then bring it back around to the bend of the hook. Now if you are using a big curved hook like this, you'll want to rearrange it, just reposition it so you can get this body well around the, the bend probably about halfway around. Now let's put some wax on our thread and dub the body. Olive fur. I'm using rabbit. If you don't have rabbit, just use any other kind of olive. Synthetic would be fine. And it might take a couple of applications. I'm gonna to try to put it on here uh, tapered so that I can build up a tapered body. So real thin in my noodle at first and then get a little bit thicker as I go down. Okay, about halfway done, I'm gonna reposition the hook and put my second little bit of dubbing on here. Okay, now that we've got a nice tapered body there, the next component we're gonna tie in our throat. And the throat of this is just brown partridge. If you don't have partridge, any brown hen would look fine. And it's, it's just a small sliver, maybe 10 fibers here. 
out like that and probably not to the point of the hook, maybe just shy of the, the hook point. So let's catch this in with a, a couple of medium wraps that we can, we can adjust our position if needed. Okay, I think that throat is gonna be fine right there. It might be a little longer than I want, but I'm gonna leave that. So I'm gonna put a couple of tight wraps right there. Okay, and we'll go in and snip off this excess. Just as close as you can get it. If you can't get it all the way down, that's fine. Just bury that with your, your thread. Now take the thread back up to the front of that body. Now we're going to tie in the wings and just small slips of wings. I'm using uh, silver or gray mallard here. And for a typical wet fly, you might cut the slips about a hook gap in width. Not in this case, these are just tiny slivers. So that's well less than a, a hook gap. I'm gonna tie these in one at a time, maybe a half a body length. So I'll just put a loose wrap right there, then another one, I'm gonna check my position. I like that length, but that's going up just a little high, so let's try to point it down a little bit. Okay, I think uh, that's gonna be fine. So I'll put a tight wrap right there, and then do the same thing on the near side. Just another small little sliver directly on the side. You might want to put it a little bit lower and then that first wrap, that first wrap might cause it to spin up. So I think we're okay right there. See, I got those wings coming off about what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of tight wraps to secure them. Just reach in here and snip this excess as close as you can get it. And again, if you can't get it too close, just push it up with your finger, your fingernail, and we can bury these stubs with the thread because we've got a, a bit of dubbing for the head yet to go. And the head is hair's mask. So I'll put some generous amount of wax on my thread right here. Take my hair's mask and I'm gonna just grab a little pinch. That's the ear right there. Just small pinch at the base of the ear, right above the eye socket. And it's really just a small pinch, leaving the guard hairs and everything in it. So I'm gonna just spin this into a tight noodle on here. It's not even gonna be an inch long, maybe a noodle about three quarters of an inch, which will give me about four wraps of this dubbing. Because we're not putting a, I mean, it's, you see it's, the head is not that big here, so. I said leave those guard hairs in. They might be getting a little bit unwieldy on us, but we can take care of that during the cleanup if we need. So I've got a few rogue fibers right there, but we've got enough room for our whip finish. And I'm not using head cement on these. I'm just doing two three turn whip finishes and that's worked so far. Hasn't built it up too much and I'm sure it's gonna be quite secure. So go ahead and snip your thread off right there. And do we have anything crazy? Yeah, in this case we do. We got some crazy sticking up right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just snip these off. And there you have it folks, the olive sedge. Just a caddis nymph, caddis pupa. Pretty cool pattern, pretty easy to tie. So that's it, I appreciate you watching. And we'll see you next time.